how do you prepare yourself for long sorties or pond crossings and, and stuff like that? And, you know, I, I don't know if you've done many pond crossings. The only one I've ever done was Hawaii to Dallas, which was a little over seven and a half hours. Um, and, and for me in the F-16, it, we had the limitation that you, when you do a pond crossing, you're crossing a lot of time zones, you can't land at night. So we had to take off at night because you can't take off and land at night. And so we, we took off at like 12 or one o'clock in the morning, you know, right after midnight or one o'clock in the morning. So you had to sleep in the afternoon. They gave everybody like Ambien, slept yep. through the afternoon, go to the airport. And we had a tanker drag because, you know, you're obviously you have to refuel a lot. So we had a couple KC 135s, two different cells, and we blasted out of Honolulu. And I think we refueled like, I mean, for, so you, you have gates that you have to meet because with a single engine jet, you have to have divert fuel in case something goes wrong or whatever. And there's not a whole lot of islands out there. So right. there's a time period where, you know, at first you may refuel every hour, but then there's certain, certain checkpoints where you're refueling every 15 minutes, you know, you're just topping off. You're, you know, you're off the boom, you know, the, the six ship cycles through, you're right back on the boom. You're off the boom, six, six, six six ship cycles through your back on. And for me, you know, the way I prepared is I wanted, you know, snacks, water, something to drink, piddle packs. Uh, cause you know, I, I've got a 1.0 bladder no matter what. And, um, <clears throat> I, I, at the time, this is how, you know, long ago it was, I had, um, the PSP and I had movies on it. You know, so I had, you know, my, my, my things to watch the movies because, I mean, you're just out there and, you know, uh, uh, not root, but, you know, you're out there almost an attack line abreast on autopilot for a long time. And then for us, once we hit feet dry, a new tanker picked us up, brought us all the way back to Dallas. And then we landed at Dallas, spent the night and then flew the rest of the way home to, to Homestead. And, you know, I had some really long sorties deployed, but, you know, that was my only pond crossing. And, I always go back to my mentor, T. Barry, was talking about, you know, as far as anxiety, and we'll talk about this in the mental health minute, but there is a point, I'll never forget him talking about this, there's a point on any pond crossing where you realize I'm just as far to turn around as I am to keep going, and I cannot turn around. So what's your experience, and how did you prep for, you know, pond crossings or long sorties? I'm curious, what was your longest sortie, like, in the F-16? seven and a half seven point something like upper sevens almost eight i never did a pond crossing i did a uh transcon so from lamar all the way to key west that's probably the longest like uh, air nav i style or uh a to b kind of flight i've ever yeah, done yeah. and i forget that's probably what it was with the wind so probably just under five hours and there was wasn't anything special about that other than you kind of talked about it, the refueling aspect of it, which actually I thought it made it kind of easy because the tanker did all the navigation. I mean, we, we were, yeah. they referred us as chicks in tow, right? So we just hung out yeah. back there. And like you said, we just cycle off the, uh, off the tanker. And it, once it got, uh, I think we were around Mississippi tankers, yeah. like, see ya, he peeled off and then we, we went the rest of the way. But, um, I did an 8.2 uh, flight in Afghanistan. Yeah. yeah. And you, know, you bring up, you know, the, so I guess the long flights part of it, it, it's a, I guess it's worth mentioning. That's something they really never taught us in the Navy. I, I, did you ever get any formal, like, no. right? Every sortie in training in the B course of the F-16 is probably an hour to an hour and a half, right? 1.8. Yeah. Two hours yeah. if you're doing air to ground, maybe. Yeah. Same thing in the Hornet. So like, you know, heck I was, in the squadron for a little over a year when we got out into combat ops, which was the first of my long, really long flights. And, uh, it was literally my XO pulled me aside and he said, Hey man, uh, we need to talk about how you're going to handle this day. And I had no idea, you know, I was just kind of in my little, a uh, little zone, but then he brought up everything. He said, Hey, you're going to have to pee. <laughs> I was like, Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know? So he gave yeah. me, you know, piddle, Hey, you need three piddle packs, bring some food, water, uh, yeah. and he's like, how are you going to set up your cockpit? Cause all these things you're going to be carrying, it's not going to be the same. So there was just a lot of housekeeping stuff with regards to long flights that I really was, wasn't prepared for unless, you know, the senior, my XO or some of the senior guys would have brought it to my attention. But I think you agree with me, the, the F-16 and the F-18 definitely were not designed and built for 
ain't, ain't really anything over about three hours. And no. <laughs> and, and, and by the time, so when I did that, that pond crossing, that was after a deployment. Yeah. So I was, uh, I had back problems, you know, from yeah. the deployment. And so I would like stand on the pedals, like flex my back, you know, you like cause yeah. you'd start getting fidgety and there's not a lot of room, especially me, you know, I'm over six feet tall. Like there's just no room. Right. And in Iraq, you mentioned that it's a good point. My first non-graded ride was a combat sortie in OIF. And those were, you know, four hour missions, five hour missions. We tank every hour on the hour, you know, and, and, they don't, they don't talk to you about that. You just, you right. have a, you know, helmet bag full of pedal packs. I had, you know, cliff bars, <laughs> I had water and, uh, for the sortie and I would eat a cliff bar and use a pedal pack between every tasking. Just, uh, just yep. I mean, cause you just get bored. Yep. And the only reason I knew that was because my very first sortie in the F-16 as a sandbagger, I've talked about this on the channel. I didn't have a pedal pack and I had hydrated so much that I'm like, oh my God, I will never never fly a jet again without a pedal pack and and, yep. and they but you know now guys and you know this is a consideration as you get older because you know when i was in my early 20s i didn't care but now guys are like emodium you know and because if the moment hits i've heard <laughs> stories of guys if that does happen helmet bags um you know lunch boxes like different ways to relieve that <laughs> side of things because you don't have a pedal pack for that. And, you know, you're in a yep. flight suit. I can't imagine doing that in a Viper. I, honestly, there's like the amount of gymnastics. You're just like, well, <laughs> you know, I'm just going to accept the fact that I'm. I'll do it. Hey, one more thing we didn't mention was um, in addition to the long flight. So our combat missions off the boat were between five and eight hours. And yeah. um, drugs was part of the uh, part of the uh, recipe. Yeah. The go, so, no go. Uh, w there was a whole program. Hey, here's some speed to help you get back. And here's the sleepy pill. Don't mix them up, you know? So, you know, the, I, I, until flight doc walked into our ready room and, and told us about this, I always thought it was kind of just a yeah. story I heard, but no kidding. They, there's a drug program too, to help you stay sharp <clears throat> for these yeah. long missions. Cause like I said, these planes, they're not designed for long flights and you mentally it, it'll mentally wear you down, especially if you're, if there's things going on, like if you're actually supporting some cast events and if there's weather, you know, the yeah. juggling the tanker, I mean, uh, mentally yeah. you lose your sharpness. And so there's even, you know, I, I, I forget the name of the program. Uh, it's go, no go. for us, it was go, no go. I mean, it was uh, like, yeah. um, uh, we did ground testing on it first and I didn't do my ground testing until I was yeah. in country and I didn't yeah. like it. So I never flew with the go pills. I couldn't like it. It got my heart rate up too high. I felt jittery. I just, I couldn't. Yeah. Do it. I didn't do it either. Cause I just don't trust myself with <laughs> yeah. those kinds of things. Yeah. <laughs> and, and then, you know, you talk about that. That's, that's a good point. Cause one of my longest, like it was a six something hour cast sortie. You know, we were troops in contact going from one tasking to the next, one, one tasking to the next. I land and I pull into EOR and one of the hydraulic lines broke and I had a brake fire. Yep. And so I, I'm on fire in EOR. They're like, sir, you're smoking. You got to get out, you know, and it's like three o'clock in the morning. I've been in this jet for however long. And you're like, oh, my God, you know, I, I got to do the procedure. I got to shut this thing down. I got to get the canopy open. I got to get out. And right. it's just after that long of a mission when you're just mentally drained, because that's the other thing too, when you go to combat, your body clocks flips, you know, you know, you're trying to get used to sleeping. Your circadian rhythm is just all messed up. Yep. Fight at night. Yeah.